Hello everyone and welcome to Free Your Mind and Make a Plan. Uh, firstly apologies, I'm jumping in a little bit late. So hopefully um, you can either join me live or catch up on replay and if you are catching up on replay please do share your comments and your thoughts and your questions. So the idea behind this live is um, really that we, particularly in the world of work, we focused on a plan. We're focused on action. What do I have to do today? And we maybe spend in the, our work life, we might spend a little bit of time at the beginning of the year um, planning, working out where we're heading, but then just life starts throwing stuff at us and we've got our emails, we've got our meetings, we've got stuff happening and we start to do. And we start to do and we start to do and we start to do. And the output of that is overwhelm and burnout. And I'm seeing it more and more. It's just an ongoing legacy from the pandemic. A lot of my clients work in the charity sector. The need is great. We could always we can always be doing more. So we keep doing. And as I say, this leads to stress, anxiety, burnout, overwhelm. Um, and we come into this point of overactivity. And what I want to share with you today is really a matrix to help you think about where are you in this? How are you balancing doing the activity, the strategy, the process, along with our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts, our well-being, taking a step back. So we've got the kind of zoom in, zoom out. We've got um, our feelings versus doing an action and another way to see this is you know our left and our right side of the brain i always forget which side of it is but you know one side of our brain is focusing on um our thinking and our doing um our, and our action and the other other side is more of our emotional um side of the brain and we have two sides of our brain and we need to balance both we need to not suppress one side to sort of suppress our emotions and feelings and just keep doing so it's really important that we think about these two sides in our lives, in our strategy, in our work life, in when we're supporting people. So when you manage someone and all of the conversation is, what are you doing? How's it working? Um, uh, and you're not taking enough time to think about their emotional well-being, um, their overall well well-being, asking how they are, how they're feeling, talking about it from a different perspective, bringing feelings and emotions into the workplace then you're missing half of the work. And if you are supporting someone who is either facing into overwhelm or burnout, or they are in what I would call a passive or no action stage, which is where they're procrastinating, demotivated, disengaged, resentful, passive aggressive, that's because they're low on the kind of strategy and the focus and the the more practical side of things, but they're also low on the well-being and the energy side of things. So these are the two places where we don't want to be. So if you imagine a matrix on the horizontal vertical, you've got um, your energetics, your self-belief, your thoughts, your feelings, your well-being, all the soft stuff, but 100% important stuff. And on the bottom, you've got strategy, you've got skills, you've got experience, you've got process, you've got practical action, learning. So then the bottom left by where my these two connect, this is the passive space where you're not taking any action. Um, you are feeling that lack of ownership, ownership of self, ownership of your own sense of personal power, responsibility and ability to move forward. And that is where we we um, um reduce ourselves to a passive state uh, we don't take action we feel sorry for ourselves we're bitter we're resentful we're angry um disappointed hurt all of these things sit in that space so if you're feeling that um the chances are you're not focusing enough on your energy your well-being your ownership of your power what is in your control what actually can you do that can have an impact but equally, you're not doing, you're not taking action um, that could help you to move forward. 
And then this other space is the over control. So um, this is where I see a lot of people because we're, you're capable, you're skilled, you're knowledgeable, and you know that actually if you need to show up, you need to work harder. Um, uh, or you think that if you need want to succeed in work, you need to work harder. You need to do a little bit more. You need to work over lunch. You need to work in the evenings at weekends. You need to be there to answer all the questions from your team. All of this is really important to you because the doing, the strategy, the making progress is really important, but you are neglecting yourself. You're neglecting your own well-being. You're not taking time to zoom out, to look at actually what's going on. You're not taking time for your mind and your brain to just explore all the opportunities and the possibilities. And you're just so focused on what is right in front of you. And that is really when we're in that overwhelm, overwhelm and burnout space where uh, we might be feeling fear, lack of self-belief, um, stress and anxiety, that imposter saying, I shouldn't be here. Um, and the only way I can prove that it is authentic or it is right that I'm here, I just need to work harder. If I work a bit harder, it will be OK. So if you're watching live or if you're watching on replay, please do share if you are in any of these spaces. The third space is a space of surrender. And this is where we feel peace and we feel calm. We have a strong sense of our personal power and ownership um, from an inside point of view. So we're spending lots of time reflecting um, on focusing on our well-being. So an example of when I was in this space, so I left my full time work and I very, I took voluntary redundancy. So I had, a, I had the privilege of space um, and I had a new dog and I just spent two to three months slowing right down and quite frankly, recovering from a very difficult period. And this is when I started this journey of learning how to focus on myself, learning how to believe and trust in myself, learning the art of reflection, learning the art of slowing down, trusting my vision and um, the big picture of where I was heading and holding the space in that moment. And I look back and I think, gosh, I was so calm and relaxed, even though I didn't know what the plan was. And so sometimes we are called into a place of surrender. There are times where we just need the only course of action is to lean back in is to focus. So this is the top side of this of the um, grid. So we're really centering and focusing on ourselves, our energy, our well-being, our thoughts and our beliefs. And sometimes that is when maybe even after you might have had some kind of trauma or stress or burnout and you need to move up into that space in order to recover. But sadly, we can't stay in that lovely space. I mean, you know, if I sort of visualise that, that's kind of me lying on a beach um, uh, with lots of time to myself, um, freedom, all of that. Um, but there's a risk that we, if you stay too long in that space, we move into fear and procrastination because we can't move forward and take action. So this is where we combine the beautiful, wonderful space of our energy, our feelings, our emotions, our work on our self-belief, with action, with taking practical action. So if you want to, um, you know, achieve something in your life, so say you're dreaming of having a wonderful birthday party and you're imagining all of your friends around and um, you just think, I'm so excited about my birthday party, it's going to be amazing. In order to make your birthday party happen, you have to take action. You have to find a venue, you have to sort the food and the drink out, you have to invite your friends. So that's how I like to see it. You know, if we want to achieve this wonderful birthday party, if we want to have what we want, we have to take action. Um, it doesn't just happen for us. And that's when we move into the strategy space and say that this applies for both home and work. <laughs> so if you're at home, if you're thinking about your personal life, you might be taking it in that view. But also when you're managing somebody else. Your role is to help them to know when to surrender, to know when to pull back, but also um, and your team to know when to surrender and pull back. Actually, let's step away for a day. Let's um, reflect or stop at the beginning of this meeting, even if it's for five minutes. So you can move in and out of surrender and action. And that's the skill to know 
um, when to pull back, to stop, to lean back and when to move forward. So where we want to be is in this place of deep inner peace and calm of um, our ability to step in and out of surrender and action of our self-belief, our deep core, owning our power, I sort of always sit up when I do that, uh, that sense of our true understanding of who we are, our values, what matters most, and knowledge of us, an understanding of our strengths, but also an awareness of our skills, what we bring to the table, and having a plan. How are we going to do it? How are we going to get to where we want to get to? And this is the place of um, uh, appropriate action which sounds very boring but for me that is visualized in sense of calm confident self um, control really powerful relationships you're able to connect with people because you understand yourself and you've taken the time to consider their views so you're able to be assertive rather than perhaps passive or aggressive you are performing. So as you are taking that step back to learn and grow and reflect and acknowledge feedback, you're learning and you're growing and that's exciting. That's um, giving you that sense of that vision and that hope for the future. So those are the four states. So the state we want to be in, uh, where we want to be moving in and out, in and out of surrender and action and holding the two in place. So I always just think every day, you know, what am I balancing? Am I, how am I thinking about my well-being, my, um, myself? How am I looking at the bigger picture? What, what actually really matters here? And how does that relate to today? How does that relate to my to-do list? So to simplify it, I put on a social media post this week. It's the difference between the being and the doing. If we just be, um, aka lying on a sofa <laughs> or lying on your sun lounger without the doing you're not going to get there if we just do without the being the doing becomes overwhelming the doing becomes um too hard also the doing can be ineffective so this is where we start to move into a different space around effortlessness because if we are true true to the knowledge of who we are and where we're heading and what matters most what we then choose to do how we spend every moment of our day is going to have more impact and that's when we start to move back we start to rest we start to find calm because every action is impactful and i actually think that some of this is a is a bit of an uphill battle and i will keep sharing this inside um my community because culture and society focuses on doing um so I want to give you four, sorry, just checking my notes. Um, I'm going to give you four steps to think about how you can move um, from the passive um, and or the overactive. And then I'm going to give you um, four ideas for action, two um, around the soft stuff um, and two around um, the action stuff. So, um, how do you move out of passive and overactive? So thinking about well-being. So I shared on social media a well-being model which looks at your mental, emotional, spiritual and physical well-being. So a very simple assessment tool. Where are you at today in all of those areas and how can you move forward in one of those? Um, and everything I share right now is stuff that you can do for yourself. And if you manage other people, you can apply that to managing other people. So hopefully that this is useful for that too. Then ask coaching questions. So coaching questions enable us to take that step back and remove ourselves from perhaps the sort of detail and the things that are um, um, holding us back. Then step back. So step, set a vision. So zoom right out. And every day I like to think, actually, what am I doing today that is on the, the sort of balance well-being side and what is what am I doing on the practical side so almost put your balance and your well-being on your to-do list and then create a plan and so so a few of my ideas really to include soft stuff in meetings so ask people how are you feeling share your limiting thoughts encourage people to use that language of saying you know I've had I'm, I'm I'm struggling with the thought that um, I uh, am not able to present, do this presentation or I'm not good enough to write this report. 
So share those feelings. Talk about growth and learning, both in your for yourself, um, but as a team. And another way you can do this if you're leading a team is to facilitate thinking sessions. To say, look, we're going to have no agenda here. Let's just think about how we can think. You know, what are what are we assuming that's holding us back? What are those stories? Are they true? If they're not true, what is the more liberating assumption and what action can we take? Incorporate feedback regularly into your working life. Ask for feedback and give feedback. Even if you don't manage people, just make sure you're doing that regularly because feedback builds a culture of trust and growth. Keep going back to your objectives. So um, I shared this morning um, on LinkedIn around kind of zooming out. So remember where you're heading. So if your team or you are facing into overwhelm, zoom right out. Actually, where are we heading and what are you going to be able to do today that will help you get there? And you'll start to see some things just actually aren't, don't matter and need to come off your to do list. And then the final really practical tool is a prioritisation tool, which I, I think is similar to that, that Zoom Out tool. You know, what's going to have the most impact and what's easy to do? So remember, we want to not overwhelm our time and our capacity. We want to do things that are going to have the most impact um, and are um, easy to do. So following the prior, do a quick prioritisation matrix. So those are my tips and my ideas for action. So include soft stuff in meetings, um, uh, keep going back to objectives, zoom in and out all the time, regularly just zoom in and out, in and out, and think about your priorities. So what is going to have the most impact and what is easiest to do? So hopefully that tool has been helpful for you to think about that balance. I just do my visual on my hands because every day I think, actually, how am I balancing those two? And it's a constant adjustment. And it might be one week you're just really going on the to do and the action. But make sure you're building in time after that for the reflection, um, for the self work. So both are super, super important for us to um, come into that place of calm, confidence, um, having wonderful powerful relationships both at work and at home in our all of our lives um having an impact in what we do so i'd love to hear how, how uh that was helpful for you whether it resonated to so just simplify it right down to the, those two things um i'm gonna have to jump off because my dog is um being a bit noisy so i hope you have a wonderful week and i look forward to seeing you next week